Welcome, everybody. This is a uh, turnout with one day's notice, and uh, thank you all for being here. It shows that the IB program, PYP, MYP, IBDP, has a great future in Greece and in this school. I believe that running from kindergarten through graduation, this is going to become the backbone of our college. And it is a huge honor for us to have Adrian Kearney, the director of the IB program worldwide, responsible for 4,800 IB schools. And uh, it's really an honor that you're here, Adrian. And I'm turning it over to Apostolos for the introduction. Since um, 1968, the not-for-profit IB aims to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. To this end, the organization works with schools, approximately 4,800, as it was mentioned before, 17 of which are in Greece, governments and international organizations to develop challenging programs of international education and rigorous assessment. These programs encourage students across the world to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners who understand the other people with their differences, who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. What I just read is the mission statement of the IB which, as most of you know, is very close to the mission statement of the Hellenic American Educational Foundation. In 2018, the IB candidate celebrates its 50th anniversary. Today, we have the honor of having with us the director of IB World Schools, Adrian Kearney, who will give a presentation entitled International Baccalaureate, celebrating 50 years of world-class education. Before giving Adrian the floor, let me quickly present our speaker. From 1998 to 2009, Adrian was assistant director of ESOL at the University of Cambridge. From 2009 to 2016, he was IB regional director for Africa, Europe, and Middle East, and the Middle East. Since 2016, he has been director of IB World Schools. What Adrian may not recall is that this is not his first appearance in our school. He joined us for our 20th IB at Haef anniversary, sending his message and wishes through the video. Distinguished guests, leadership, faculty, parents, and students, Kalispera, and congratulations on the school achieving this fantastic landmark. My name is Adrian Kearney, I'm the director of IB World Schools based in The Hague, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to say a few words on the occasion of the celebration of 20 years of IB College. I'm very sorry not to be with you, but Greece is very dear to me. In fact, my wife is Greek, and uh, my son, my eight-year-old boy, he actually goes to regular Greek school here in The Hague, so he's, um, he's a good Greek boy. I want to begin really by thanking the leadership of college for its commitment to the IB programs, uh, the teachers and all of the students and parents who help make the IB come alive within the school every day. I value the strong commitment to the IB philosophy in the school, which of course draws on the classical Greek foundation from the philosophers, which we owe so much. We celebrate the fact that college shares a tremendous commitment with us to excellence in education and to make the world a better place through education. Now to the students directly, I want to say, by studying across subjects and analyzing complex and interconnected subjects, you're developing the, the habits and the study skills to be successful in today's interconnected world. The approaches to learning will help you with the rigorous study to access the top universities around the world. So continue that journey of exploration, and I wish you every success. Enjoy the ceremony and the celebrations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Adrian Kearney. Okay. 
Well, um, uh, very good afternoon, everyone. It's delightful to be here. And um, I have more hair than I had on the video. Unfortunately, it's on the bottom and not on the top of my head. But it's, uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful to be here and not just be through video, but sort of in person. So uh, thank you very much. And very imp impressive because um, Richard uh, kindly invited me to come and he said, well, come and meet some people at our school. What I didn't realize that it's not just a meeting, it's actually a, an instant conference in terms of the number of people and commitment. So uh, thank you very much for uh, spending time with us. Um, so I'd like to give um, a brief, uh, I think a brief presentation, some key points, but then open it up for dialogue. I see there are microphones for questions and uh, sort of uh, take it from there, but it's, um, I must say it's a privilege to be here and to be in this uh, historic college. Uh, my first time seeing the premises and I'm just so impressed by the faculty and the premises and the dialogue I've been having with the senior leadership. So um, it's been a bit late, but I'm sure this is not the last, my last visit to the college and I look forward to continuing to support it in its development. So a few things, right? Let's start with a bit of, you know, let's not just go into a conventional presentation. Let's talk about a few things and a bit of, so why IB and why is IB sort of relevant? So I've just got a few starting points and a few stories to kind of kick us off. Some quotes I like, which I think talk to, okay, the IB is 50 years old. It's got a clear mission and purpose, but that remains relevant today, ever more relevant, I think, because if you've got a good idea and a good foundation, then that lasts, right? So quotes and things I like, I saw this recently, the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. So you're saying, well, why IB? Why should we invest and, uh, and develop our program? What does this mean for my son or daughter? And when it comes to uh, all of the developments in technology, artificial intelligence, etc., we cannot know now what the jobs will be in five years time necessarily. What we do know, though, is in terms of ethics, creativity, entrepreneurship, those are going to be the foundations of what will be the jobs in the future, right? And an IB education, collaboration with a school such as this, is trying to embed and infuse that within the students right from age three all the way up. And project-based learning and creativity are a cornerstone of the program. So straight away, we're trying to say these are very topical things, right? Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. And the point I'm trying to make there with that quotation is it's not just good education, it's good values-based education that balances national priorities, identity, language, but also thinking about the impact that we have on the wider world. So the importance of action, of service, and how we work and the impact we have on community is, is really important. So part of what this college is doing and we're developing together is the right kind of leadership for the future that can help influence and make the right sorts of decisions, not just in terms of professional life and university. What we hope is that young people will make the right decisions in their lives, right? Because that's really where the impact is. And as I've said before, and it's a little bit of a cliche, you can say, well, young people are a small proportion of the population but they're 100% of our future. And that's why we, and you know, my wife, as we, you heard from the video, my wife is Greek, I understand you know, Greek family reality. The level of investment and dedication of Greek families in the education of their children is exceptional. And there's lots of studies which kind of show that. So, management is doing the right things. How Netflix, how many of you, hands up, come on, let's have some audience participation, let's not be too quiet here. How many of you have, uh, are aware of Netflix? Okay. Right. So we understand what Netflix is, and it started as, you know, you know, a way to compete with your local DVD video store, right? But it's completely changed and transformed, and actually now has greater revenue outside the United States than within it. And now starting to build things like Netflix cinemas, and it's gone from a content distributor to a content maker. So some of the best... Uh, programs you can find are made by Netflix. There's a very good presentation that you can search online, which is how Netflix reinvented HR. And if you want to think about the future of work and employment, and people talk about how do Google their employment practices and Netflix, so you're in an environment in which you're sort of saying, okay, 
You can take the holidays you want. There's no restrictions on the hours. You can define your own jobs. It's very open. It's very free. It's very, very interesting to kind of go through this uh, presentation. One of the key questions uh, in this is, how do you ensure in such a fast-moving environment, and you can imagine how dynamic it must be in Netflix, the constant changes in technology, the organizational changes, everything that's going on to make what we see possible. So the question is, how, how, does, how does HR in Netflix ensure that staff are able to do their jobs and be effective? And the answer is, we recruit people who are very good at keeping up and doing a good job in complex environments. So if to operate at that type of level, the training and the development needs to start really early. It's not something that HR can say, here's a policy, here's a document. It's actually a way of operating in terms of the ability to find clarity out of ambiguity, to develop the right kind of leadership, to operate with complexity. And of course, when we're talking about international mindedness, the points about language and culture, managing projects and so forth. These are the cornerstones of this. So Netflix, it's an interesting example to say, this is what an IB education can contribute to. The Einstein student effect is something where what I mean is, imagine Einstein was doing A-levels. Can you imagine being the teacher and Einstein being your student in maths? Can you imagine how that would be? But if you were a maths teacher or they're doing A-levels, right, the maximum Einstein could have got is an A. That's the maximum, and all his potential will be defined by that A. And what I'm trying to say here in terms of student potential is through project-based work, we're giving students the ability to show what they're really capable of. So it's removing that ceiling, if you like, in terms of we're going to cap what we think is your performance at A and give you project-based work and things like in the extended essay of the, the diploma, the personal project and NYP. These are spaces where students can get into a subject in great detail, can evidence that. And when they come to university and university applications, and if you, many of your children will, I imagine, go to UK and go through UK admissions process, then they're going to be interviewed. And one of the things that admissions officers really value is a deep conversation on a topic. And the extended essay, the MYP personal project mean, I've thought about this, I've been through a project, I've reflected on it, I've researched it, I understand this fully. And that gives those students uh, a significant advantage. And when I talk a little bit later in terms of UK universities, you'll see uh, that uh, IB graduates uh, outperform um, A-level students in terms of recruitment. The other thing which you see in terms of European competences, so if you're following the European Commission and the work of transversal competences, uh, for example, and the skills competences within the European Commission, then all of those competences actually relate directly to what the IB does and the type of education we want. So those competences reflect strong mother tongue, foreign language competence, digital competence, ethical competence, right? Mathematics, engineering, science, all of these things. So I think that um, the approach of an IB education not only sort of did well in the past, but leads through now and is part of the European sort of direction forward. Can you hear me? Yes. You're very quiet, you're very good and very quiet, you know, so, you know. This is just like a small, can you just get, talk to a small audience of a few hundred people, please, you know, so. Uh, Apostolo spoke to the mission, so I'm not going to repeat, uh, uh, repeat that, but we have, you know, uh, uh, we have a significant point of difference as an organization in terms of what we're trying to do and our history and background, right, and the type of learners that we're trying to produce. And what unites IB schools worldwide is they have a common vision of learners with these sorts of attributes. But at each individual school level, they're saying, what does this mean for us? What do we want in Athens? What does open-minded mean in Athens College? How do we exhibit it? What does you know, knowledgeable, risk-taking mean here? So when you talk to um, my daughter works for PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and there is a significantly disproportionate number of partners and colleagues, they've all done the IB. And you can see them, and at university level, that universities like MIT say, we can see IB graduates, they stand out. Academically strong, but they make a contribution to the university community you don't see elsewhere very easily. 
So we have the attributes. We have a history. It's 50 years. And I think a couple of things just to say. Why IB? There were two main reasons for why IB. One was after the Second World War, you had uh, migration uh, kind of taking place, both in terms of industry and business, as well as in terms of diplomacy. So people started to move around the world, and you needed a, a quality transferable education. So rather than having to study the national system in every country you went, you had a transferable diploma. And of course, to Apostolo's point, you needed an ethically based education where people could talk about differences without going to war. So the recognition that people with their differences can be right. Doesn't mean they always are. It's a debate, right? But we're trying to think about how education can be developed. And in 1968, on the left of the uh, chart there, the first curriculum they worked on was international history, because that was the most difficult and contentious to work through. So you have a history in the development of the programs, and the IB is a Swiss non-profit organization, okay, headquartered in Geneva. And then you have the programs. We've talked about the continuum from left to right, the primary years program, the middle years program. So those programs are frameworks. And what I mean by that is that you can incorporate national standards and requirements within them and then teach them through the perspective of the PYP or their MYP. And then we have the diploma program, which you're all, I'm sure, very aware of as the, the platinum standard in terms of global university access. And we've recently launched something called the career-related program, which is for learners who want to follow a specialist or um, technical kind of uh, education. So this is ages sort of 3 to 11, 11 to 16, and this is upper secondary, 16 to 19, either the academic track or kind of specialized technical uh, education track. So that really helps to sort of address the needs of society. And all schools work with the IB mission, the learner profile, and we have consistent standards that we expect our schools to be to perform at, right? So that's how we ensure the global network sort of works. And, okay, this is a graph with a lot of numbers, but what you see is uh, actually the profile of schools globally varies greatly. So in the Americas, and there are, um, as you can see there, there are 2,900 uh, schools in the Americas, about 2,000 in the United States. So there's a lot of schools in the United States, mainly public. They're public and charter. So we work within large US districts. So we've got a very strong profile there. And then in Africa, Europe, and Middle East, it's a mixture of private schools and public schools. We have big public projects in uh, Spain, UK, Scandinavia, for example. And then in Asia Pacific, it tends to be private schools. Uh, with some state projects in Australia, Japan, and Malaysia. But it's global, and it's globally engaged and, and growing well. And I think if you talk to the IB staff here, what you'll hear is the enthusiasm and commitment for that kind of global vision and education. So the school is able to chain, exchange ideas and best practice with schools from the rest of the world. So that's it. As we, for example, in professional development, you're meeting teachers from other contexts, sharing ideas and developing best practice. For over 40 years, an international baccalaureate education has been helping people cross the boundaries that separate languages, countries, and cultures. Today, the IB continues that tradition, providing a continuum of international education that features four high-quality programs for students from 3 to 19 years old. In a rapidly changing world, IB programs aim to develop intercultural understanding and respect a mission reflected in 10 core values. The IB Learner Profile describes the attributes of people who are empowered to help create a better and more peaceful world. As IB learners, we strive to be inquirers, curious, enthusiastic, lifelong learners who ask powerful questions, knowledgeable, exploring locally and globally significant ideas, thinkers, Critical, creative, ethical decision makers. Communicators. Good listeners, confident in more than one language. 
principled, honest, fair, and responsible. Open-minded, developing critical appreciation for our own cultures and the cultures of others. Caring, committed to service with the community. Risk-takers, courageous, resourceful, and resilient. Balanced, focused on well-being for ourselves and those around us. Reflective, thoughtful, realistic, and hopeful for the future. At the heart of an IB education are passionate, lifelong learners who believe that how you learn and why you're learning is as important as what you study in school. Students are at the center of IB programs, internationally-minded people who recognize their common humanity and shared guardianship of the planet. An IB education means opportunities to develop healthy relationships, imagination, and ethical reasoning. It means building the confidence and persistence students need to achieve challenging goals. It means learning what it is to be human and how to thrive in a complex world. IB learners work together to turn experience into understanding. As they learn how to learn and how to manage their own learning, IB students are supported by assessment, a variety of strategies through which teachers help them understand how they're doing and how they can keep doing better. An IB education helps students build understanding through inquiry, action, and reflection. Students learn by doing, connecting the classroom with the world beyond. IB programs culminate in exhibitions, projects, and independent research that demonstrate not only what students know, but also what they can do. An IB education creates learning communities in which students can increase their understanding of language and culture and which can help them to become more globally engaged. Through IB programs, students explore how to face both local and global challenges that involve the environment, development, conflict, rights, cooperation, and governance. The IB's courses and curriculum frameworks are engaging, relevant, challenging, and significant. In IB programs, students learn content that is worth knowing and that can help them make a difference. An IB education spans traditional academic disciplines and pushes students to make connections across many fields of study. IB programs are broad and balanced, conceptual, and connected. Their rigorous models of assessment have earned widespread respect, including recognition of the IB diploma as an international university entrance qualification. The IB represents an independent, worldwide community of educators who are committed to excellence. Thousands of creative IB World Schools collaborate to connect high ideals with the day-to-day -day details of teaching and learning. They hold each other mutually accountable to standards and practices that define high-quality educational programs. What makes an IB education unique? Alumni, educators, supporters, and more than a million students and their families every year working together to make a better world through education. Thank you. You can clap if you want. Um, <laughs> it's not obligatory. Um, let me, we don't have that much time and it would be nice to get to some questions and I'm going to share the presentation. They, they have it here so they can uh, put it on the school website. So I, would, I don't want to just talk to lots of slides, but it would be nice to um, have, a, have a discussion and a debate. Um, I think just a, a few closing points really for the, the presentation. I'm particularly thinking about the parents in the room and thinking about the diploma and why the diploma. So maybe if, I, if you allow me to skip through some slides because they really just build on the facts that uh, I've already presented. But you have, the, you have the diploma and the rigor of the diploma. So is it the easiest way to university? No. Is it the most effective once you're there? Absolutely. And what research shows, and you can see on the IB website, and I'll provide some information, you're more likely to enter university, right, to be accepted in terms of challenging universities, but also you're more likely to get a first-class honors if you've done the IB as a proportion of the cohort and to go on to first class and to go on to further study. So it's, 
It's, it's, um, it's what we call a challenging program. Challenging is a big word, right? We're not saying it's easy, it's rigorous, it combines many different elements. The right choice of courses can help the student in terms of access, but you know, it's a challenging program, but the benefits come through as they go through to university. So these are the top destinations for the IB diploma, right? UK is being the number one, followed by the United States. The Netherlands is a growing uh, market, of course, and there's many, many courses in the Netherlands which are offered in English, and I live in The Hague, so I'm testimony to that. This is interesting. So this is um, Ofqual, so this is one of the big UK sort of agencies, government agencies, and they conducting a perception survey in terms of you know, uh, qualifications and their perceptions. What's, this quotation is really quite powerful. There was strong agreement from all groups that the IB diploma is good preparation for further study. HEIs, which is higher education institutions, universities, right, were particularly strong in their agreement, significantly higher than the level of agreement offered from other groups. So the universities get it, right? They see the benefit. Because it's good for them, because they get good results, which helps them improve. And these are the top universities, okay? Destination universities. And what you'll also see is if you take, for example, King's College London, it's actually reduced its entry requirements for the diploma. So is Leeds, so is Glasgow. So and Glasgow is interesting, because um, uh, education in uh, Scotland remains free, uh, just as an anecdote. But King's College London have reduced their requirements because they know that IB diploma graduates perform well. They'd overestimated. So this is part of the, the change that you see. Now, this is interesting. So of all of the university applicants in the UK that are processed by the central agency, UCAS, 2% of them hold IB qualifications. Because obviously, you know, you've got lots of A-levels and et cetera. But when you look at what is the percentage, though, which are taken by individual universities, it's much higher than 2%. So you can see that Oxford, Cambridge, Bath, Imperial, University College, King's College, right? They value it and disproportionately are taking more IB graduates. And this is, you know, recognized uh, in lots of systems uh, around the world. So I think that's just some evidence to say the universities get it and they see the benefit of an IB education.